Hi, I'm Dan Hart, CEO of Virgin Orbit, and it's a pleasure and an honor to be here at the Elon Ramon Conference. We at Virgin Orbit have been working on an innovative approach to get to space. I mean, there's a revolution going on in spacecraft architectures as small satellites are being used extensively for commercial space, for civil space and space exploration, and for national security. So we developed a new launch system uh, to get those satellites where they want to get to, when they want to get there. And if you're looking at the picture uh, on the screen, and you notice something a little different about it, you may notice there's a rocket underneath the wing of that 747. And the might and the flexibility of that aircraft, coupled with a simple rocket, is the key to this system. It's a dream that's been around since the beginning of spaceflight, of how do we marry aircraft technology and rocket technology and effectively get to space. And I'm proud to say that the team at Virgin Orbit has done it. So if you look at the next chart, launch systems have taken the same approach since the late 50s and early 60s. Um, ground launch rockets, trying to simplify the launch pad and equipment and, and having all of the same weather and geographic and equipment issues having to do with blasting off of a launch pad. We've taken a different approach. We're using aircraft capability married with rocket capability and it gives you incredible new, new abilities. Um, it, it changes the economics of space flight. We can make the rocket smaller because it starts its work when it's already at 35,000 feet doing the better part of Mach 1 and two-thirds of the way through the atmosphere. So a very simple rocket of one engine on each of two stages, all composite, additively manufactured engines, really the cutting edge of manufacturing technology. Also, there's environmental benefits here. Instead of using uh, launch pads in the middle of wildlife preserves, which is the tradition of ground launch, we reuse a runway at an airport, we reuse a 747 aircraft, we go wherever the rocket wants to go to start its space flight, and we start it there, reaching any inclination, any orbit from any spaceport. Our system is modular, and you can see our, our system uh, before one of our launches there on the left, where all of our ground equipment is essentially a bunch of modular trucks that can fuel the rocket, ready it for flight, we disconnect it, we taxi off, we get our green light to to go to space from an airport tower, not from a complex launch range. Um, very flexible, no waiting online for some other rocket to be ready. And in addition, as we look forward, we look at um, freighter aircraft as a very interesting evolution of the system because we can pack two rockets, all the equipment, payloads into a single 747, fly anywhere and launch. A very interesting uh, uh, capability for international space flight a very interesting capability for deployed, quick response national security launch. And in that light, we have been working with several countries around the globe to bring space launch to their shores. This summer, we will be launching from Cornwall in the UK. Uh, at the G7 summit uh, last year, we met with the Prime Minister, you can see there. And, and there's a lot of excitement, a lot of teamwork really happening in the UK between the UK Space Agency, the RAF, um, and our company as we prepare Cornwall as, as a standard, not only airport, but a spaceport. We, in, in fact, we have a RAF uh, uh, officer who, uh, who flew on our last mission and actually released the rocket in our last mission. I'll talk a little bit more about that. But we're working with the UK, we, we're working with ANA Airlines and Japan uh, and Oita uh, Airport uh, to, to launch from that area. We're, we're working with Brazil, we're working with Australia and a half a dozen other countries because there's almost 80 space agencies across the world. There's only 10 countries or so that have space flight uh, coming from their sovereign territory. Uh, very exciting, there's a huge amount going on globally in space. And more recently, I'm just really excited to report that um, earlier this month, we did our third successful space flight. So at this point, there are 26 satellites from the last three missions that are traveling around the globe 
collecting science, supporting industry, supporting countries, um, and learning more about our world because we've been able to deploy them. I couldn't be prouder of our team. Um, in this last space flight, as I mentioned, we had an RAF officer uh, as part of our flight crew. That's a first for us. We achieved an orbit from California that's never been achieved from the West Coast in, in, in the United States. And in the last three missions, we, we flew from a place in, in California, Southern California, near Los Angeles, that's never done space flight, just by flying off of, a, of a, an airport. And, and we flew to, to a 45 degree inclination flight, a, a, an inclination, an orbit that's usually only achievable from Cape Canaveral. And so our ability with, a, with an air launch platform allows us to essentially change the geography, fly the airplane out wherever the rocket wants to go to launch. We've supported now uh, national security payloads. We've supported NASA. We've supported uh, our, our allies with, with uh, first launches of their satellites. And very importantly, we've supported the commercial community. We look forward to continuing that. Uh, we're working very closely with the Space Force. I mean, the ability in this period of time where space is, has, has, has had some aggression associated with it, the ability to pop up a satellite from anywhere at any time to any orbit um, is a key tool and enabler, and hopefully one, that disincentivizes people from ever attacking satellites in the future. Because why do it if one can be replaced the next day? So that's a little bit of a nutshell of our system. Um, this year, we will be ramping up. Our next launch will be this spring. As I mentioned, we'll be launching internationally this year. We'll be increasing our launch cadence uh, and then building on that in the years to come. So look to the skies, we'll be there. Team Rocket, already on Rocketnet, looking for confirmation your system is still go. Thermal? Nobody's go. AVI? Go. Flight software? Flight software is go. GNC? GNC's go. Payload? Payload's go. S1 prop? Go. S2 prop? S2 prop is go. Systems? Go. Copy all things. LCC and control room, we are go for takeoff. Okay. LDCE on control room, we are go for terminal count. Release. Release, release, release. Release confirmed. Newton 3 startup confirmed. Stage 1 burn nominal. S fan lock for Baja TM data is confirmed. Mexico Alpha achieved. Stage 1 trajectory nominal. Music to my ears. Thank you. Calibre over base. Uh, stage 1 burn is nominal, passing 120,000 feet. Newton 3 shutdown confirmed. Stage 7 brake fire is broken. Stage 4 startup complete. S2 prop, stage 2 burn is nominal. Downrange, O'Higgins, locked. AOS and frame lock at Mauritius. LD on control room, for those who haven't heard, we have a confirmation of all seven satellites deployed. All systems are good, they're coming back for land. Copy stepping off, it was a great day to go to space with everybody. LD, LD, Cosmic Girl is on the ground. Welcome back, Cosmic Girl.